This video provides an example of when the average treatment effect is not identified. The focus is on intuition, so there are lots of gross oversimplifications, and some of the mathematical details are glossed over, but we will look at the numbers to try to think about things mathematically. In this example, the outcome variable y is an individual's annual earnings. Imagine that annual earnings is determined by two components. One is due to formal education, which will be the effect of which is represented by these top cards here. Uh, so Roughly speaking, if an individual goes to college, they get a random draw from the black cards here, and if they do not go to college, they get a random draw from these red cards up here. There's also an unobserved effect of informal education, which is represented by these bottom cards down here. Uh, so this is things like what an individual learned at home from their parents or just things outside of you know, going to college, like uh, summer math camp or things like that. Now the way uh, earnings are determined is before the individual comes into being, there's a coin flip this. If it's heads, like this, then the individual is, roughly speaking, born into a privileged family where they get to go to college, and they also have a high amount of informal education. So in other words, if you get heads, you get to draw from the black cards both times. If instead you get tails, then uh, you do not go to college, so you draw from these cards, and you also do not have a high level of informal education, so you draw from these cards. In other words, you draw from the red cards both times if you get tails. So we can, well, just as an example, so you can imagine we flip the coin, and then I'll use the die two times to figure out which of the three cards from each pile. So if it's a one or a two, I'll pick the first card. If it's three or four, the second one, five or six, third one. So again, we first flip the coin of privilege here. So here's a tails. So that means we draw from red cards both times. So first for the formal education, here is someone who did not go to college, but of course there's still um, you know, different qualities of high school. You could go to different jobs and so on. Um, so there's a one. I'm knocking my cards. So that means they'll get a four here. And then for the informal, it's a two, so they'd get a five here. So they'd get four plus five is nine. And I should mention to map this into a dollar per year value, uh, you multiply by $10,000 per year. So 4 plus 5, 9, that means $90,000 per year. Um, not bad. And of course, we could have gotten 2 and 3, um, then it would have been $50,000 per year. I guess that's still not too bad. Um, but in comparison, over here, we could have had 10, and 10 would be 20, that would be $200,000 per year. So anyway, that's just an example for how the earnings get determined. So if we're thinking about ATE identification, first question might be, well, what is the ATE here? So for the ATE, we want to know if we hold constant the informal education and we just isolate the formal education effect, the effect of going to college versus not, what is the average effect of that? And if you remember from the textbook, there's sort of two mathematically equivalent ways to write the ATE. One of them is to 
take the average or the mean uh, treated outcome and subtract the mean untreated outcome. Um, so since we're holding constant informal education, that part cancels out. So the ATE is the mean of these minus the mean of these. Um, so to make it simple, remember these are all equally probable. So the mean is just the simple average, and I made them nice and evenly spaced. So the mean is actually just the middle number, uh, which here is 7, and here is 3. So the average treatment effect is 7 minus 3, which is 4, or in dollar terms, $40,000 per year. That's the ATE of going to college in this particular example that is completely made up. Now, if we want to think about identification, we're trying to think, can we somehow link that $40,000 per year difference to something observable uh, that we could, that some feature, statistical feature of the population that we could estimate. Uh, in particular, we've been thinking about the mean difference or the conditional mean difference. However, intuitively first, remember if we get, if we're looking at someone who in reality went to college, that's equivalent to saying they got a heads on the coin, which means they're also drawing from the high informal education effect, not the low one. If there's someone who did not go to college, that means they got a tails, which means they're drawing from the low informal education cards. So what's happening is when we look at individuals who went to college, they're getting both the effect of going to college and the effect of high informal education uh, compared to individuals who did not go to college who are also sort of getting the worst of both worlds here. So again, just at an intuitive level, if we compare the annual earnings, so the sum of these two cards of individuals who went to college uh, with the total annual earnings or the sum of these two cards for individuals who did not, we're basically lumping together the formal and informal education effects but then we're ascribing the full difference only to the formal education difference. Um, and so that will be a problem, and in this case the ATE is not identified because of that. Another way to think about that is uh, if we look at people who went to college and people who did not, the sort of other stuff we're adding in, if you think about like the U and the structural model, the other stuff is not at all random. It's not independent of whether or not you went to college. It's in fact very highly correlated in this example, correlated with whether or not you went to college. So uh, more formally, we could you know, think about what is that mean difference uh, between people who went to college and people who did not go to college. So again, since I made the numbers nice and easy and everything is even probabilities, uh, we can just do that uh, mentally. So if we look at total earnings, annual earnings for someone who went to college, we'll get a 7 here and a 9 here, so that's 16 or $160,000 per year. Similarly, nice numbers over here, even probabilities. We'll just get 3 plus 4 is 7, or $70,000 per year. So if we look at the observed or observable population mean difference, it's 160,000 minus 90,000, or sorry, minus 70,000, which is $90,000 per year difference, which if you remember, is much bigger than just the $40,000 per year difference that is the average treatment effect of education, uh, formal education, going to college by itself. 
So we can see in this case, because of this sort of correlation with the unobserved stuff, um, the ATE is not identified, and there's this positive bias where the mean difference or conditional mean difference uh, is much higher than the true ATE of college.